Okay, thank you to the organizers for uh, uh, creating this panel. I really appreciate them allowing me the opportunity to be on it with such phenomenal scholars. Uh, a lot of them are mentors. Uh, I really appreciate this opportunity. So while we're on the eve of this 2020 election, uh, it's important to keep Arkansas in sights, in particular, Little, Little Rock. Uh, and tonight I want to focus uh, specifically on Joyce Elliott. And I'm calling this the native daughter Joyce Elliott and the Blue Black Wave. Um, in, in 2020, uh, Joyce Elliott is actually running for the uh, US Congress District number uh, two. Whether she's able to win this district will, will be based on whether she was able to be successful in 2010. And uh, the motivating question that we're gonna go through and it's some of the social capital and political capital and the electoral outcome of this 2020 election. So, the question that we're actually asking is, can Joyce Elliott ride the blue back woman wave to win the 2020 US district election uh, for district number two? Uh, what we see currently right now is 130 black women are running for Congress. Uh, this black woman wave that I'm calling it this last election, uh, we saw women of color, 11.9% uh, were black, 4% uh, were, were black women. Um, with uh, Joyce Elliott's uh, enormous amount of community involvement as well as her experience and, her, and the high level of turnout, we could see a seismic shift in Arkansas's political landscape. But the uh, political composition of Arkansas, in particular Little Rock, and what does Joyce Elliott have to look for in the 2020 election? So the political composition of Arkansas right now, we have one party control that some people call a trifecta. One party controls the three vital centers of the state power, the office of the governor, the state house, and the state senate. And currently you're looking at a, a majority of uh, Republican controlled state with 76%, uh, Democrats only at 24%. So it's fair to say that uh, Representative Elliott faces a racial threat being the first black person to run for the congressional seat in district number two. Arkansas is one of the last Confederate states uh, without a black congressperson. So it's important for her to galvanize both her social and political capital in order to win this election. Um, so where is Joyce Ellis uh, uh, Elliott's social capital? Well, as I said earlier, she is a native, uh, which means that she began her life in Arkansas in a little town called Willisville, Arkansas. So it begins for her uh, with the integration of a school approximately two or three years after the Little Rock Nine. Uh, she was the second African American to, to graduate from her high school, uh, the first being her actual sister. Then she spends 30 years as a teacher and is a well accomplished politician. And she's also engaging in intergenerational uh, protests and activism. And she channels her lived, lived experience in her public service and her policies. So she speaks a lot about her uh, sewing through college, uh, given an everyday experience. Her sister having a kidney failure, which motivated her to pass comprehensive healthcare policy, a bipartisan comprehensive policy. And ironically, when she speaks about the national election, she doesn't necessarily dwell completely on Biden and Harris. She also focuses on and connects herself to Dr. Fauci, uh, which is important because this is, this is a, a, a strategic campaign measure for her to be able to bring into light the, uh, the understanding that she's connected the COVID-19 victims and pressing towards a more comprehensive healthcare policy. So what is, what is uh, Joyce Elliott's political capital? Uh, she works as a bipartisan politician. Uh, she has an eclectic array of uh, political po uh, policy, including healthcare, uh, hate crime bills, uh, business uh, policies. She has more than 19, experience, uh, 19 years of political experience, six years in the House, 11 years in the Senate, and she's running for District 2 uh, in Little Rock. So it's going to include both the suburbs as well as the main city of Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, she ran in 2010 and lost to Tim Griffin by 20%. And so the question is, in, in the face of this type of op opposition, will she be able to overcome the 2020 election? And the simple answer is perhaps. Uh, considering the fact that she's running against uh, incumbent Fern, Fern Hill, who actually engages in dog whistle politics. Uh, currently, he engages in using uh, slogans such as 
um, her using uh, advocating for defunding police, uh, calling her a radical liberal. Um, he doctored a photo of her raising her fist, saying that she was a part of the Black Lives Matter movement and some sort of black radical. Uh, when in actuality, she was simply supporting the students as a 30 year activist within the political school system. Um, so how can she win the 2020 election? So recently in Little Rock, uh, as recent as 2018, Frank Scott won uh, the mayoral race. Why is this important? He was the first African-American to win the mayoral seat at the age of 35. So what you're seeing here is a part of this or this new component of this blue black wave, where she could be able to be able to garner that same energy and same political power that we saw in uh, the 2018 election with Frank Scott for the 2020 election. Also, we're seeing a higher voter turnout in Arkansas overall. Although it has 250,000 voters uh, in Little Rock alone on the first day, it broke records with over 8,000 people uh, willing to vote. As important political endorsements uh, from, of course, the Biden-Harris campaign to Barack Obama, as well as former governors of Arkansas that's willing to support her. She has the support of teacher unions, as well as uh, been highly and critically acclaimed for her uh, uh, work inside of the business field. Uh, she's also intergenerational, which means that she's able to, to connect with the younger folks. And that was through the Black Lives Matter movement, as well as being engaged in comprehensive welfare reform. She's also able to reach across the aisle, which is important. And I think one of the more important parts of her work that will stand out is her motto. Um, Joyce Elliott running for Congress, she argues that she believes in public service, not self-service. And this is evident from her uh, 20 years of experience, as well as her push to actually ride the black, the blue black wave into Arkansas. Uh, so I'd like to thank uh, the panelists as well as the organizers for having me on this panel. And I'm gonna stop there.